In today's video, I'm going to give you a full beginner's guide to Zoho People. Now, Zoho People is a cloud-based HR software, which are designed to help you manage employees, timesheets, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm going to walk through how it all works and the best practices. So first things first, if you haven't already signed up for an account, go down below this video. There should be a link there. If you click on that link, it'll take you to this page here, and that will give you a 30-day free trial to Zoho People. So once you've got to the page, it looks like this. You want to click the Access Zoho People button. And it's just going to ask you for some onboarding questions, you know, your name, your organization, your phone number. Fill that all in and it should take you to this dashboard here uh, and we're ready to go. Now, on first glance, it does look a little bit intimidating. But once you sort of understand how it all works, it's really simple to use and it's actually a really great tool. The first thing I'd recommend doing is going over to the left hand side and going to organization. This section here is where you're able to add all of your employees and it's very easy to go ahead and do. You just want to go to the top right here where it says invite user and then it's going to ask you for some questions. So you've got the employee ID which you might already have or you can just make it up. You have the preferred name so they have maybe a nickname that they prefer to be called or something like that. You put that there. Then they've got their first name, their email address, their last name. And then we have some more stuff. So we have the department here. So we've got HR, management, marketing, IT. And if the department that they're in isn't on there, you can go to this little plus icon here and you can actually go ahead and create a new department. They've also got the location. So you can put the location in there. And they've got their designation. So their CEO, admin, manager, assistant manager, and team member. So you can put that in there. And again, with any of these, you can press the little add icon and add a new one if it's not there. Now. On the right hand side, they've got the Zoho role. So this is what kind of um, power they have inside of the Zoho app. Uh, it's probably going to be team member for most people. But if you go ahead into their sort of FAQs, it will tell you what each different role can do. But things like admin, they're going to have a lot more power than team member. So probably start with a team member. Next up, we have employment type. So, you know, permanent, on contract, temporary, trainee. Um, employment status, so active, terminated, that kind of stuff. Source of hire, so where they came from, which is quite useful. Date of joining and current experience can be added as well. Then down here we have some hierarchy information, so reporting manager, so you can put the person who is who they report to, um, their date of birth, uh, some of their expertise, age, gender, um, marital state status, a little about me maybe. Uh, and then some more contacts, so their work, phone number, personal phone number, extension, personal email, seating location, uh, if you have a seating plan or whatever, their address, um, their permanent address, uh, when they're going to leave, and other experience they've got. So other companies have worked out, so you can put company name, the title they had there, the date they worked from and to, the description, and if it's relevant to the current role. They've also got the same thing for education where you can put, you know, the institution, the degree, the specialization and when they completed it. And then they've got some other details as well, um, like their next of kin. So if there's an emergency, you can go ahead and put that in here. So you can go ahead and press submit and that's going to add someone to your organization. And they should show up here in organization and you can always just go into them and you can just press this three dots here, press edit. And you can go in and just change any details about them that you might want to. Now, we've got this section here, but on the left under organization, we also have department. So you can add a new record again, like I just showed you. Um, and you can select a lead. You can select a parent department. So you can do that with departments. Uh, you can do the same with designations. Uh, same with exit details. You can add records here about um, why someone exited, that kind of thing. You've got organization tree, so this will show you the management tree, basically, who's under who. And you've got birthday, folks. This is when it's people's birthday. This is really useful in case you need to maybe arrange a gift for an employee for their birthday or something nice like that. You've got the new hire sections. So this is people who have been hired recently. Favorites, so for some reason you might have favorites. I don't know why you would use this. You might have to. And you've got groups here, so you can create a new group. Um, and you can create a specific group. Maybe there's like a specific one-off thing you want to add them to. And then you've got your tasks here. And then finally, you've got the settings here. So um, these are just some general settings for the organization bit. 
So once you've added some users to your organization, they'll show up in the home section here. Uh, you have all of your different uh, widgets I've just shown you. So stuff like birthdays, new hires, favorites. You'll have all of that showing up here and you can also uh, mix and match the, the uh, tiles if you want to, if you want to organize them differently. Now, once you've done that, they're gonna be given a self-service role here. And the self-service role is going to be a way of them managing their own things. So they're gonna have their profile here. They can also add some stuff to their profile if they want to. Um, it's going to show the team they have, if they have one. And there's going to be the calendar here. Now on the calendar, they can right click it or they can click on it and they can apply leave. So they can select a type of leave. They can select the uh, dates, uh, stuff like that. We've also got the time off here. So this is going to track how much time off everyone has. So it shows you in days um, how much time off you have available, basically. Uh, and you can apply time off here, just like that. We also have the time tracker, so you can go ahead and log time. So you can either log time for daily, weekly, semi-monthly or monthly. And you can press this button here, and this is going to go ahead and start counting your time. Um, and you have to select a project for this, but it will count the time for that project. Next up, we have attendance, so it will show you the attendance of the person and down here it's going to show you the you know the payable days the paid leave the weekends absent all of that kind of stuff down there we've got files in case they need to add any files maybe um, a doctor's note or something delegation so any tasks they've been delegated to uh, goals so any goals they have for their work goal and any cases um, you can raise a case and uh, get it answer basically then you've got extra details and travel expenses here so if you've got some travel expenses you can add a record here description date um, basically the pricing of it all what currency it was in uh, and you can submit that and then that can be approved for you the same as like travel requests and things like that so when somebody tries to or asks for time off or puts an application for it you can come down here to where it says time off and you can go well, there's going to be list view, calendar view, and there's also going to be this time off application section here. So when somebody does go ahead and put in an application for this, it will show up there and you can either approve or decline it. And then it will show up here when people are actually off, um, that kind of thing. You can also press apl apply time off here. You can select the employee, uh, you can select the leave type, and you can do it manually there as well. You've also got stuff here about bank holidays, if people are taking time off for bank holidays or which bank holidays you guys actually offer and then you have your settings here which are just um, just you know default policies so is absent if is being absent paid um, stuff like that and then you've got some other policies here so you can customize them uh, but yeah these are all different general settings really that you can go through uh, if you want to customize it so just like that Next up, we have the time tracker here. So this is very similar to what I've just shown you, except this, you're going to be able to go onto each different employee here and you're going to be able to see their time, um, the time that they've logged. And if you want to, you can go ahead and actually log time for that specific employee. Um, uh, you have to pick a project. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So underneath the time tracker section, go over to where it says projects slash jobs. And you want to click on uh, where well you've got jobs, you've got projects, you've got clients. So if we go into projects, we can add a project here. And we can just put a name in. So we could say um, costing one or something. It's going to ask us for the client name. So we can press the add button here and add a new client. Um, just put any name in. What currency they get paid in or they pay you in. Let's just say anything. Submit that. And then here we can put the project cost. So this is going to be in the currency that we just put into here. So we'll just put any number for now. The project head, the rate they're getting paid per hour. So put any number. Who the project manager is. So you can put that in there. And the project users. So we can go into here and we can select the different users who are part of that project. Just like that. And if we want to, we can just select a department as a whole. Then inside here we can add a description. Um, just like that and you can submit this and that is a project ready to go. 
Now we can go over to jobs and we can add a job and we can put the job name. We can put the project, so the one we just made, for example, start date, end date, the amount of hours, the rate per hour, uh, description, reminder users, billable status and work items. So maybe you've got something like some data entry. Um, you maybe put that in here and then you can just allocate that to a user with a set amount of hours and a pay per hour just so you can keep it organized. And then by doing that, you're going to have your timesheets here. So you can create a new timesheet. Um, you can select the employee, the period, and you can select which jobs they're gonna be doing, that kind of stuff there. And you can actually approve timesheets and stuff like that in here as well. We've also got a job schedule, um, just so we can see who's doing what, when, how long they've worked on it, that kind of thing. And again, here we have all of our settings. These are pretty, uh, specific for the time tracking stuff but just go through them if you need to change anything in here next up we have the attendance tab so we can just select a um, employee or a user just see when they've worked um, it will tell you the hours they've worked you can do it on different views so you've got the list view the tabular view and the calendar view and you can also uh, shift their schedule so you can change it around uh, you've got employee shift mapping, shift calendar, breaks, and shift rotation. And you can configure all of these really easy. Uh, just in here, you can schedule the schedule name, the frequency, the time, um, the applicable period, all that kind of stuff. You can just add that in there very simply. So next up here, we have the performance module. And this is really useful for um, basically rating how well an employee is doing, how well they're performing. And we want to press get started here. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and um, there's a lot of things we can do. So we've got an appraisal cycle. So we can put the name of the appraisal, the cycle period, description, uh, process period. Is it self appraisal available? Yes or no. Multi rater feedback? Yes or no. Um, review period salary hike um, you've got the modules to be included here and you can say applicable for so maybe it's only applicable after a certain amount of months for example from when they joined or maybe um, it's only applicable for certain teams for example we've also got ratings here so we can add ratings by default they have outstanding excellent satisfactory needs improvement and unsatisfactory uh, you've got normalization you can enable that and you can have the reviewers, so reporting to, and you can select how many levels you want that to be reported to. And you can go ahead and just submit that, and that will be the appraisal cycle. Um, you've also got tons of other things here, performance modules, uh, continuous review, notifications, feedback. Uh, this is where you can select different types of feedback options. So you've got reporting to, peer-to-peer, -to -peer, 360 degree, skill set, KRA, um, competency you've got all of these different ones here that you can kind of go into and basically set the parameters for performance stuff so here we've got the my review section um, you've got your KRA you've got your skill set goals competency and feedback um, and then we can go ahead and we've got the skill set matrix so we can go ahead and select a skill years of experience and the levels and we can search for people that meets that uh, criteria basically we've also got here our employee salary so we can add salaries if we want to uh, or we can just look at the salaries we've got their goals so we've got the goal name the due date priority description progress assigned by assigned to all of that kind of details there and we have the multi rater review as well but this is just really useful for um, keeping on top of employee performance, just making sure they're meeting goals, expectations, that kind of thing. We have our, our files here, so any kind of files that may need to be shared, you can add them in here. And this is where they've been shared with you, shared with your role. Um, and you've got some HR forms and templates. So you can create you know, forms and templates maybe for instant reports or something like that. Um, and you can basically add them into here. And then if someone needs to fill out something they can do here for example this is a uh, company handbook and you can put that there so all the employees have it available for them to look at 
Next up, we have the travel section. So um, you can request travel. You can put your travel expenses in there. Ooh. You've got your tasks. And again, you have your settings. So you can add new forms if you want to um, for whatever reason. Maybe you have food costs or you know some kind of extra expense that you need to categorize differently. We have our tasks here, so we can add a task um, in here, pretty simple. We can track the tasks. We've got our all task section and we have the form view. And we have our checklists here that we can go through. Here we have announcements, so we can add announcements. Um, it's pretty simple to do. You can put your title in here. You can put your message in here. You can select, um, you know, you can format it however you want and then you can publish it. And I believe you can select who this goes to. If we press publish, cool. hello. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I have to make the subject. So there we go, I've posted that there as an announcement and then people can like it and put comments on it. We have our cases here, so people might have some questions for you, you can go ahead and put that in. Employee engagement, so gather honest feedback from employees through anonymous feedback. Conduct impactful surveys for your employees to gauge engagement levels across various metrics and gain extensive insights through various survey reports. So you can create all of these. These are really, really useful because you want honest reviews and stuff like that. So this is going to be completely anonymous. So employees can give feedback on lots of different things. And you can go ahead and just customize this um, to your liking and publish it. And you can set times where people can put that. You've also got your HR uh, letters here. So address proof, bona fide letter and experience letter. You get your tasks and settings again in here so you can create different forms. And then we have the whole onboarding here as well. So this would be for a new candidate or employee. You can add them into here just like that. They have the more section here and they have this customized tab so you can actually turn on or off um, the tabs that you want and the tabs that you don't want. We have our reports down here as well, so we can actually create reports based on a ton of different things here. You know, salary distribution, um, you know, all of these different ones you can just go ahead and create. And that's pretty much everything from the app itself. There's a lot more you can go into in detail, of course. Um, you could spend hours going into real detail about this, but that's basically a basic overview for beginners of how it all works. Now, if I go over here, I'm just going to show you the pricing for it. So this is how the plans are broken down. Um, essential HR is 83p a month billed annually. Professional is 1.50. Premium is 2.50, and enterprise is four. Um, you can select which plan you want. So let's say you want this one here, which is pretty affordable. You can select the number of users. So let's say we have 10 users, going to be 480 pounds per year for the users. And then we can add some add-ons. So we can have support. We can have API calls if we need that. Uh, extra forms, extra storage. Jumpstart, so they've got some sessions there. Um, and we could basically pay for that and that should be ready to go. Uh, you can also pay monthly, it's gonna be slightly more expensive, um, but I think maybe 5% more expensive, but if that's what you wanna do, then you can go ahead and do that as well. But that's basically a beginner's guide to Zoho people. Now, as I said, if you haven't already signed up for it, use the link down below as that will give you a free trial for 30 days so you can test it out, see if you like it. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and comment down below that helped you out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.